Okay, it is six o'clock on March 11th. Call the March board meeting um, to order. Noting all members present, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I need a motion to approve the regular board meeting minutes of February 12, 2024. So second. Oh, yes. Flores? Yes. Missouri? Yes. Flickling? Yes. Diachenko? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Herman? Yes. Motion carried. Um, I need a motion to approve the executive session personnel committee meeting minutes of January 11, 2024 and the executive session regular meeting minutes of February 12, 2024. So moved. Second. Flores? Yes. Missouri? Yes. Whitman? Yes. Diachenko? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Herman? Yes. Self? Yes. Motion carried. I need a motion to approve the March 2024 expenses as submitted. So moved. Second. Missouri? Yes. Flickling? Yes. Diachenko? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Herman? Yes. Belt? Yes. Flora? Yes. Motion carried. Next up is the treasurer's report. Balance at first community a month end was two million three hundred thirty-two thousand seven ninety-nine thirty-seven. <clears throat> Outstanding checks totaled five hundred ninety-seven thousand eight forty-six sixty-eight. Uh, we had Jer January payroll expense carryover of thirty-two thousand fifty-nine zero one, leaving the adjusted bank balance at one million seven hundred two thousand <coughs> ninety-three sixty-eight. The lunch program balance, 87442 Impress fund, 5000 Total balance, $1,795,336.32. The investment accounts, total $5,273,1196, leaving the balance of all funds as of February 29th, $7,068,348.18. In February, we had 371000 134.31 in receipts. Expenses totaled 1,887,629.46. The individual fund balances at month end. Education fund, 5,065,177.02. Building fund, minus 200,438.60. Transportation fund, 906,401.51. IMRF, 126,762.27. Working cash fund, 267,426.45. Torque fund balance, $324,002.25. Life safety fund, 579,1738. We earned 11,323.73 in interest in February. We had just a handful of deposits from the state. Uh, state aid, 314,122. <coughs> School lunch program, 10574 Driver education, $14,56.98. And lunch, lunch program supply chain, $15,234.92. And there were no property tax distributions. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. I need a motion to approve the treasurer's report as presented. So moved. Second. Quickly. Yes. 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 I know we have the basketball team here before us. Do we have the coach to kind of talk about their season? He is. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're kind of tall. <laughs> Just saying they're taller than you. <laughs> yes. Uh, we appreciate you guys having us. Um, obviously, the last four months, the support that we've had from the school and the community in, in these hallways has been unbelievable. Um, and it's been a, it's been a great um, 
a, a very big reason why we've had success. And you know, we went 34 and one. We lost our only game um, in the postseason. We were one game away from making it to the to the state tournament. Um, and the team that we lost to went on and, and won the state championship this past weekend. So um, looking back on it, you know, one loss over the, over the last four months to the team that ended up taking home the big trophy. Um, we're thankful for you know our team is so tight knit and they're so such a good group of friends on and off the floor that it kind of showed in some of the selfless play that they had on the basketball court every night and in practices and in these hallways and some of the support that has kind of come in from across the community over the past couple months has been along those same lines of how close these guys are too. So um, I, I grew up in a small town. I played small, you know, played sports in a small school, and I understand how sometimes you know the entire energy and the vibe of the city and the lifeblood of what comes from the school generates from our athletic team sometimes. Um, and I think these guys did a really good job of showcasing the really good things that we had going on in the school and brought a lot of positive attention to to our to our hallways here and. Uh, I can say that probably the most proud <laughs> moment that I have and the, the, the most proud point that I have is that they did everything the right way. We don't have kids on this team that are that are troublemakers. We don't have kids on this team that cause issues during games. We have a group of kids who play hard, they play for each other, they, are, um, they don't care about personal accolades, and it really showed in the style of play that they played this year, and they just, for four months, they've done everything that they've been asked to do and they've gone about their business the right way. And if you saw kind of some of the things that happened at the end of the super sectional game with the team that did beat us, you would have never saw some of those things happen out of this group of, group of individuals. So um, only losing, whether it's a win or a, lo a loss, we're gonna do things the right way and we are going to keep our heads high. And um, I hope that they made you guys proud on how they've represented the school. And I, and I hope the community and the town as a whole feel some of that sense of civic pride as well because um, we're definitely thankful for, for everybody that had our backs this year and uh, it, it was something that we're going to remember for, for a long, long time. So this is your 34-1 uh, your and, and Elite 8 appearance varsity basketball team right here. So, Mr. Trevin, your team is the first one that we've kind of morphed in these recognitions. Um, before it was, that was the end of the presentation. Thank you, parents, head on home. Um, but the board has always felt that, that that's not enough. I mean, they want to make sure that they, they're recognized. So, what we have for each one of the students is a certificate on behalf of the school board of appreciation. And once they have a certificate, we're going to get in this little horseshoe, get a little picture taken with the board, we're going to put it on the website to kind of start celebrating our kids a little bit more than what we have in the past. So you guys are the first ones up. Mr. Meyer has all your certificates, so Winces, he's going to call you off. Winces, 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 Anthony. And then just stand like right in front of that. Please, please. Good job. Good job, gentlemen. Job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ethan. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Don. And Trevor is at baseball, Stevens at baseball, Nathan's at baseball, Orland had two running runners, sisters somewhere, and who knows where Reef is. <laughs> so thank you. The borders are behind you, so you're going to have to like pee. I am. What do you have to say? We stand on our chairs. Miss Gersh, you got one in this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got a pair of twins? While you're there, too, I'd like to say, I'd like to thank Coach Hayhurst and Coach Wiley. Those guys also were a big part of, of this group all the way through junior high. Cause Coach Hayhurst was with them as well through junior high. So they have all put in a, a lot of work and a lot of time. So I appreciate all you guys do. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I mean, you can if you really yeah, want to. Really <laughs> it's a really good aesthetics lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coach Harris, we'll see you in a few months. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, back there, it's probably Mike Peters. Thank you. I Okay. And I'll put that on the website, either in cycle or underneath the uh, board, like you guys got. Um, <coughs> and we have on there later to talk about the dates we want to do it. Yeah, yeah, we'll okay. talk about okay. it. Okay. So, um, noting no public comments, we're going to move on to the. Can I ask a question? I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't know I had to bring this up to you. So oh, that's me, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. so sorry. I'm no. <laughs> that's why we always. I would know the that's, rules of being no. in education. That's why we always say really it too. Good. Sorry. Um, just say your name and where you're from. Sure. So, my name is Sandy Lessentine. I'm with Neighborhood Nutrition down the street. And Brandon allowed us to come in and do some of the concession stands with some of our products. And I wanted to donate back to the boys basketball team, girls basketball team, and cheerleaders 10% of what we made. Oh, okay. um, which 10% would have been $72.70, but I thought we would do 50 for each team. So I just wanted to donate $50 to each team. And thank you all for letting me be a part of this and watch this incredible run. I got to see it both places. I teach at home with Flossmore. Uh -huh. I just won the state championship and I got to watch these boys and so it was so amazing getting to watch it in both parts. So thank you so much. I just don't know who to oh. hand these to. Well, we will hand it to thank the team. So you, you are thank so you welcome. So much. Thank you so much. And on behalf of them, I thank you. Yes. And we will be thank very appreciative, appreciative of that. It. An unsolicited plug, my daughter loves the protein bites. And they have fun events too. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to staff reports, Miss Black. <coughs> well, um, I guess as their final together as a team after heading over to the elementary school tomorrow to brief kids, um, it was actually um, Mrs. Easterfeld's idea. Some of the little ones really look up to the boys that have been following them and watching them um, for their games. So. Yes, that. they will love sure, yeah. mm -hmm. um, Just a couple of highlights. Officer Hanson will be coming in um, during the end of March, beginning of April, to do his third lesson with our students. I'm not sure if everyone had a chance to watch Leo as mm -hmm. one of our Friday forecasters on WGN, but it was, was yeah. absolutely yeah. adorable. It was so great. Can I ask, did they reach out to you guys? Like, how does that happen? They did. So uh, Mr. Duncan was actually um, working with them a lot over the summer, the beginning of the school year, getting our weather bug and video feed and all of that working back and forth with them. So once all that was set up, they reached out and asked if we would like to participate. And Obviously, yes. We yeah, would love I always to do wondered that. how like kids got so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it seems like we're on a location, and he asked if you know they could call us again. I said absolutely, we will definitely do that. Yeah. So um, it's really exciting. I was uh, Miss Kopech and I were actually texting him morning. We were so nervous just waiting. I can't even imagine what it would have been like. Yeah, <laughs> to be him. Yeah, be yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just packed the phone. They're so cute. Um, and we had our uh, PTO fundraiser bingo night on Friday. So uh, that was a ton of fun. That was a lot of fun. You were there. Yeah. It was a great time. And just to kind of let people know where we are with math, at our uh, February 28th um, half day, the math committee put together a list of questions that we're going to share with areas who, or area schools who are using the four, um, the four series that we are currently looking at. We could and we have had some of them come in and give presentations, but it's kind of difficult because when you have a presentation, everyone makes their series sound so wonderful. <laughs> so it's, when you're done, it's almost like, why wouldn't we pick this one? So we wanted to get input from teachers who are actually using the programs from other districts that um, we hope will help us um, take that from four to maybe one or two and then get a little bit more in-depth detail from those instead of, I don't want to say wasting, but it's a lot for the teachers to be out of their classrooms trying to watch presentations and get all of that coordinated. So we're trying to get um, input all the best ways we can think of before we take teachers out of the classroom to look at Do you have anyone piloting them? We have the materials right now. Um, I believe Mrs. Parisi has taught 
um, a unit using one of them. Fourth and fifth grade are a little bit leery to pilot right now as they're getting ready for IAR and they yeah. didn't want to be piloting something that might not work so great mm -hmm. or sometimes when you don't pilot it the whole year it's yep. hard to find the right unit to fit to in start with, to yeah. go with what you're doing so I know that fourth and fifth grade plan on spending a little bit more time after testing looking at it and, and practicing some of those lessons and things like that any other questions all right, great, thank you. I'm assuming I'm next. Yes. Is that correct? Well, yes, since um, Ms. Quasney is at the game. Oh, yes. Uh, besides one team almost making it to state, we do have some kids off our math team that made it to state. Uh, geometry team, pre-calc, junior, senior, eight person, freshman, sophomore, two, junior, senior, two, oral team, uh, April 6th. So again, I know I've talked briefly about you know, we know our scores aren't where they need to be, but we do have some kids that, that are excel. And with that, um, on the back, they are second weekend to our, what we're doing to prep for the math. And so we're working on two or three problems a day. We're going to go through a digital test at the, hopefully in, I think he said March, oh, no, April, sorry, April 11th. And then we take the SAT, PSAT, April 18th. So hopefully we are going through problems that kids don't know. One of the teachers said today, a girl came to him and said, well, I don't know any of this. I can't, you know, you, you've never taught us 50% of this stuff. And it was like, well, yeah, this is what you had your sophomore year. This is what you've had in your junior year so far. So we just got to hopefully build the confidence too in them that they've had this, but we just need to practice it. So they're, they're in and hopefully we are, we're gonna work hard for the next month and a half, two months um, to, to get better. Uh, what I thought was really neat was Olivia Geringer Spagnola's poem. Um, I don't know if I've had anybody since I've been here, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, enter into the Highland Park Poetries uh, Challenge. So third place is pretty cool. It's going to be in this gallery. Um, so I thought that was neat. I don't have all the information. I thought that was neat. And then lastly, 11 National Technical Honor Society students at KACC. That's by far the most I've had since I've been here. So these guys have really <coughs> achieved. Uh, done a really nice job. Um, they'll be recognized at uh, at graduation as well. So that was big. That's that's good news. So that's what I have. And a lot of NHS inductees this year <laughs> too. Yes, I forgot about that. I was going to put that in the next one because this was already due or already in. But yes, that went yes a lot. <laughs> that is true too. But yeah, I'll talk about that. Okay. We get some good stuff. Sorry. Sorry. We need to jump in. We do. We get some good kids. So they're, they're, they work hard. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Gayham. So if you'll notice, um, I've started adjusting our agenda, your agendas. Sorry, our agendas. I work for you all. Um, and I've started putting a lot of the things that are on my actual board report within the discussion items later on in the meeting. They're not action items. Um, but again, I uh, wanted to re remind everybody that on the 20th of March, we'll have another professional development day. There is no school that day for our students. Um, we are having a speaker come in to talk to st uh, staff about differentiated instruction, uh, working with kids of today versus uh, some of the things that they've done in the past, trying to change the mindset. So that's going to be our focus for the 20th. And then spring break is at the end of the month, and so um, just a friendly reminder, the first week in April will be spring break. And no foyers. I'm sorry? No foyers. No foyers, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, we had zero. Uh, we do have, we got both the bids into the newspaper, so if you read the bid on Thursday, you saw the bid for the elementary roof and the uh, elementary flooring. We've had numerous phone calls about it which is a very good thing. Um, that bid opening will be later this month. So we're excited for that to, to be on the docket for us. Okay. Okay, moving on to committee updates. The, I know the Youth Commission had, they haven't had their other dance, right? Last Not one yet. they had, and um, it's coming up. End yeah. of the month. Uh, there's two weeks left for registration at villageofbeecher.org. <coughs> um, I know we have 146 signed up so far. So 
It'll probably be a fun night like the last dance. That's really all I have. I did not attend the last meeting. I was unable to make it. Okay, and I know it has touched upon the bingo, yeah, and bingo. they have the fundraiser coming up starting yeah, soon, right? Yeah, the raise praise. Um, that's all I got. Sometimes we just around Friday. Who's got a bingo? So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the race craze is starting before <laughs> spring break, right? I, usually I think they're doing it like before, during, yeah, and after. Yeah, I think okay. it's those three weeks. Yeah. Okay. So if you want some acts of kindness, find an elementary kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we have the booster club. Um, we're still looking for if any businesses want to purchase advertising space, whether it's a banner on the softball and baseball field or on scoreboards, because they're um, we're looking to get new scoreboards outside. Um, so they've been looking at different styles and models and then offering ad space um, and upgrading some of the facilities a little bit. All right, that's about it. Um, scholarship committee, I'm hoping is starting to get scholarships, right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we're going I know to have to be, yeah. I don't have our next date, date uh, set, but once that comes at the end of March, we'll start reading. I'm looking at them. I'm looking at them. Chamber of Commerce, do they have anything going on? Oh, they had a dinner meeting I missed. I was out of town, uh, but I haven't heard of anything first shaking yet. Okay. shaking. Um, Carbs is this Thursday for KACC, so if they haven't had anything, I will have one this week. And I know the Beecher Education Foundation just did their big wine dinner. They did. I heard of an unofficial total, but I will digress and uh, wait till we, they actually have a meeting, but it was a very fun event. Lots of people attended, lots of good prizes. I did not win anything, <laughs> but <laughs> that's okay. It was a, a great fundraiser nonetheless, so hopefully they'll have a meeting and um, we'll report out uh, on their, uh, what they made for that fundraiser. I like when I missed out on a foursome of golf because Miss Compton couldn't read that you're supposed to go up bids at ten and at five bucks. So she put a five dollar bid down and we lost by default. So Miss Compton's to blame for the game him not winning something. Okay, moving on to old business. So the first is the press policy for sixty, the second reading of what we talked about last month. So, um, I need a motion to approve plus, press plus 460 second reading that states, the superintendent shall not commit to any single, single non-customary purchase or expenditure excluding personnel of greater than $10,000 without prior board approval. So Second. <clears throat> Diachenko? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Herman? Yes. Held? Yes. Flores? Yes. Mazurik? Yes. Swickley? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next is an update on the bond. So I got to go through the wonderful process of working with S&P and getting a bond rating for our school district. Um, very few things are very intimidating. That's a very intimidating thing because there are very, <laughs> very smart people in these phone calls and kind of hard not to, you know, sometimes you can kind of wiggle your way around things, not with these people. So um, at the end of the day, they came back with an A-plus rating for the school district um, that is slightly lower than it was in the past. The past, you had a double A-minus rating, and the big drop, obviously, is the reserves. Um, That's the one thing that they noted was the, um, the reserves being where they are. Um, they could not give us a double A minus rating any longer. So if we wanted to go back for a rating in a couple of years when the reserves get healthier again, they're more, more welcome to do so. However, as um, Steve pointed out, and I agree, you're not looking to sell debt certificates in a few years. So it'd be silly to go through that process again. Plus, superintendent's hair is already white enough to do so. <laughs> um, well, what it does mean is we are seeking bond insurance. Uh, Stiefel is, they did get a few bids. They're putting that work together. What bond insurance basically does is provide you a double A plus rating uh, at, a, at a different rate. Um, what he found is that rate difference is about a 0.05% and on $2 million, it saves you about ten dollars to $11,000 um, because it's not exactly $2 million. 
And so um, they're gonna run those numbers and find out which one is best for us. Um, I'm going to guess the bond insurer will be the best bet because we're also putting in a caveat that we can buy out of the debt after um, six years. And so even though it's a 10 year loan, we are putting a, a, a foot in there that we can get out at six, which will save us about another 100 to $115,000. And so we're, again, at that little foot is gonna cost us about $5,000, but if it's gonna save me 150 in, in you know, a couple of years, it makes real, real sense. So that's kind of your update. Um, in terms of um, everything else, status quo, uh, you guys met Nate Hens. Do you remember he was the Balder fellow? Um, Steve Marr was the lead on this. He is no longer with Stiefel. He got a local, what he he's now a local politician. I don't know what that means. I did not dive, I didn't dive into it. I used to like Steve. I don't like him anymore because he left me. Uh, but no, he's great. I wish him nothing but the best of luck. But Nate's been great as well. Nate's been involved with all of this. And so he'll be able to make this transition for us seniors. So that's the update on the bond. Okay, the update for clear, Mr. Duncan. <clears throat> so I had Mr. Duncan do the presentation because, well, A, my throat's sore and I don't want to talk too much, but B, um, he's going to show you guys where we're at in terms of what um, families will see once they get that, the, the clear notification. And so, Mr. Duncan, I hope, do you, do you need this? Or? Mm, almost, it's uh, searching for you there. Searching for me? Oh. oh, I'm connected. If it's not, if it's not me, it's you. <laughs> like it's high school all over again. Okay. That's been a little tricky lately, I think. Oh, there we go. Did it come? And a little blue no. thing popped up, but I didn't read what it said. I'm definitely going to minimize that thing. See if that works. If not, while well, I'm waiting, I'm going to grab my computer just in case. Unbelievable. Hey! Oh, there you go. See, he's got a bad mouth. Unbelievable. <laughs> Great work, Joe. Don't give for me to walk away. Yeah. So, uh, the clear process that uh, approves a checks residency, <laughs> and working on that, this is what it's going to look like parent facing. So, what it actually, how it was enacted from the screens they see. So uh, in general, we've been doing this for the past four years, is the students that are returning, they receive an email that has a link as well as a code. It's like an activation code called the SNAP code. They can register through that link. So they'll click the link, they'll log in, their information will be mostly pre-filled, and they'll go ahead and register. So this year, if they're clear, they'll receive that link just like before. They'll get their SNAP code, they'll go in and they'll see a message, hey, you've been uh, cleared and approved for residency already. If they're not clear, they're gonna receive a little different email that says, you're not clear, um, please proceed to registration, but you'll have to talk with the district office. So this is what the screens look like. Um, this is a clear, uh, this is in the registration system, so it's after they've logged in, and parents have to fill these out if you haven't seen that, some of you have. And as you go through it, <coughs> you get up down to the introduction, it's going to remind you again. And basically, all this, the, the student's information, your contacts, the priority to contacts, everything's pre-filled. But it will ask you a few questions in medical and sometimes in agreements that you'll have to select. Because every year we have to ask certain things like, who do you live with? What's the language spoken at home? There's an ESL uh, survey, things like that. So once they click I understand on the few bullet points we have, they're done. Um, they just have to you know, finish filling out those few things under medical and agreements. So just to, sorry, just to clarify, if you are cleared, <laughs> which means you are one of the 90% of, about 90% of our, our families are cleared if we run it today, the only thing they have to do for registration is to scroll through, make sure everything is still right, and hit submit. There's no uploading with the exception of the medical forms if you are a freshman, fifth graders. Um, there's a, if you have a special grade where you have to upload a medical form, you do. But in terms of you don't have to give me a mortgage statement, you don't have to give me all this other stuff. You have been cleared, you're verifying that you live there still. So that's, that's kind of a big benefit to this program. If not. If not, you'll get the message when you log in that you are not clear. You also will get that in an email. You can still update your information, but you still need to go into the district office to provide them some extra uh, information. 
So they'll get it again after they've went through everything. They'll get it at the signature page, the summary page, and we also send you an email with it. So they're going to know that they have to come in uh, three different times throughout the process, and it'll be in their confirmation email. So, and no uploading for them either. So if you haven't been cleared, you have to come into the building and you have to actually provide us the documentation and have a conversation with us. The, the days of being able to upload a blank piece of paper and it and it signifies I'm done isn't a thing. So you now have to come and face, whether it's Katie and her, and her ire and anger or myself, you have to come and see us if you're one of those families who is not cleared. Same thing still applies for our new, new families. They always have to come in anyway, so this isn't uh, part of that process. Trying to reduce the time, make it easier, but by pre-filling the forms as much as possible. So then at that step then, like, you go through it all and then if it's us that checks that residency and everything goes okay, then we're done? Or does, is there any more checks after that to make sure that... In terms of the... Like if they actually live there, like are, they, are there documents... So, so if someone's not cleared and yeah. they come through, mm -hmm. so once they come through and they, they do the residency, <laughs> we still, those are still the people that we can run random checks through the clear system to make sure it's still been updated. Okay. They won't be, um, they'll, we'll still do our like overall everybody checks, but if you're on that list, if you're, like you're on a watch list. list. Okay. I mean, we're not, we're not going to deny if, if you have not been cleared, there's big red flags and you, it's you your job stand. to fix the red flags, okay. it's not our job. Okay. So that's, that's, I mean, it sounds mean, but I'm, I apologize for that, but no. I want to make sure that the people who live here are the ones who are, are getting the benefits of our education. Where do they get the information? Uh, where does the system get the information? Is this open source? Uh, yes. Yeah, so it does TransUnion. It does um, anything that's public record. It runs it uh, runs all of those. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you run a program and it pulls up there, hey, the last hit on this address was in March of 2024, they opened a credit card under that. So, I mean, it has all that access. It's all public domain. BMV. And registration is still happening in the summer after the fiscal year closes? So yes, still so July. we're still looking to probably second week in July. I don't have it off the top of my head, but okay. basically the month of July is when those families have time to come on in and do the residency stuff. Um, is there closing. any, with this, is there any opportunity to register sooner for the ones that are cleared or no, that kind of messes up your end? So that, 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 that messes up there okay. because yeah, I knew before, but I didn't know if this yeah. kind of helped it or not. Now, I Joe want to talk about a hopper and how it sits we're, there, but yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're not, the answer is no. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So. Okay. Right. Sorry, Joe. Well, it's just, you know, when everyone's at school's on the brain in May, it'd be really nice <laughs> if you just sent it out and got it done by July. Yeah. Just people don't check. It's summer. Yeah. I feel like that would be, but I understand how Thanks, it works. So, okay. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Off, right? You're welcome. Joe, you turn off TV? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next up is executive session. So I need a motion to proceed to executive session for the purpose of Act 5 ILCS 120-2C1. So moved. Second. Hanson? Yes. Herman? Yes. Joe? Yes. Flores? Yes. Missouri? Yes. Wickling? Yes. Yuchenko? Yes. Motion carried. On that one by itself. Oh, yeah. And maybe should. Yeah. Okay. It is 729 on March 11th, calling the March General Board meeting back to order. Um, next up is new business. <coughs> Um, I am going to separate, that's not until down there, so this one I will not separate. Is there anyone that needs to, any employment items that need to be discussed individually in employment A? You said you, you, said wanted, the one you're you wanted to pull out. Um, um, that's the next one. That's the next motion. Well, it is? No, all, no. all, all of A is you employment. Can, oh. All of A is employment. You're looking to pull uh, out you're going to pull number out. four. Yeah. Number four. four. Yes. So with well, the exception of a four. Well, you've got as two separate motions on here. The top three are for you to read. The top three are your resignations. You guys oh, okay. have acknowledgement yeah. of those. Yeah. Okay. 
I was like, it's two different motions. Okay, I need a motion to acknowledge the resignation of Beecher Elementary School second grade teacher Lauren DeVore, maintenance director Mike Stanula at the end of fiscal year 2024, and Beecher High School assistant varsity softball coach Tyler Shireman. So moved. Herman. Yes. Bell. Yes. Flores. Yes. Missouri. Yes. Whitley. Yes. Diachenko. Yes. Hanson. Yes. Motion carried. I need a motion to improve the employment of Beecher Elementary School teacher aide Brittany Horrigan for the remainder of the fiscal year 24. I'll move it. Second. Help. Yes. Flores. Yes. Missouri. Yes. Flickling. Yes. Yuchenko. <laughs> yes. Hanson. No. Herman. Yes. Okay, I need a motion to approve the employment of Beecher Elementary School aide Danielle Sesqua. That is an excellent way I would <laughs> strongly support you saying that. For fiscal year 25, the K-8 <laughs> art teacher Danielle Ruff and Beecher High School assistant varsity softball coach Adam Shearer. So moved. Second. Flores? Yes. Missouri? Yes. Clickling? Yes. Diachenko? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Herman? Yes. Bell? Yes. I need a motion to approve volunteers for Beecher High School softball program Marty Schmidt and girls basketball program Jeff Bonomo. So Second. <clears throat> Missouri? Yes. Clickling? Yes. Diachenko? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Herman? Yes. Belt? Yes. Flores? Yes. Motion carried. I need a motion to approve the renewal of Beecher High School IHSA membership for the 2024-2025 year. So moved. Second. Duchenko? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Herman? Yes. Belt? Yes. Flores? Yes. Missouri? Yes. Flickling? Yes. Okay, next up is other discussion items. The first one being student recognition. So as you can see tonight, um, through your guys' uh, direction, we are slowly changing how we're recognizing students. Hopefully, uh, Kara, did, Kara Snell is the one that made up those. Um, certificates. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, certificates, I thought they looked really nice. Thank mm -hmm. you for the feedback to those who gave me the, uh, those pieces. So moving forward, that's kind of the plan. As long as that went well, we'll keep doing that. Mm -hmm. The second part to that is, um, so now next month we'll have the volleyball girls be there mm -hmm. as well. Is there any thought by the board to have four meetings throughout the year designated as the student recognition meeting so Mr. Du Bois could make sure he doesn't put games that particular night? So had, had we known um, that, yeah. that you know, hey, boys basketball, we could have had you come in April. There's no baseball, softball games. That way everybody could show up. Mm -hmm. um, I know we had four, four of our boys three. tonight, three of our yeah. boys tonight who couldn't make it. Um, or do you want to do it like we're doing now, just once your season's over, you know, it, it provides more opportunities throughout the year to recognize students. I'm fine either way. I'm just trying to find a way to kind of make sure there's an opportunity for kids to be here if they wanted to be here. I don't have a problem with that. I think it's a good idea because, again, like you just said, they do have the opportunity then to all show up. Parents can show up. Whoever wants mm -hmm. to be here, doesn't have to make the choice. Yeah, it's like you're missing out because you're playing an additional sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the four meetings, it makes yeah. it easier. Because it kind of stinks that two of them are seniors. And, you know. What I'll do is um, I'll meet with Mr. Du Bois over the next week or so. We'll kind of look at the, the state calendar and then we'll <laughs> compare it to the board calendar um, and try to find a nice clean um, mm -hmm date for everything you know, I, I, my guess would be april is going to be your your winter sports june will probably be your spring sports summer is probably august no august mm -hmm. september um, like and november then, for fall right december for fall december. yeah so 
All right, um, I'll put the, if it again if it's nice clean, mm -hmm. I'll give you the nice four clean ones. If it's if it's kind of chaotic, might not be able to do it, but at least we'll want to kind of come up with some ideas to try to. Or at least block out in our own calendar when we would like to do it. Emails you know, to do to try not to put games. Yeah. Yeah, so next I, we probably can't help with games next year because he obviously yeah. is here ahead. But yeah. if you now know from here on out that April is your 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 winter month, yeah, he'll make sure it's not there because Mr. Du Bois is pretty good at that. Is there a parade for the boys? Will they decide to do that? Mm -hmm. There is not because they did not. And it sounds mean, yeah. but it but they didn't make it. So so within okay, the it's only for state. As top, I said, top four for, for the, the top, IGA. Okay, top four. Okay, I didn't know what the role was for that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of the, the, the community slash school slash if you make it to state. top four. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Other the discussion item would be the maintenance director position. Yep. As you guys just voted on, uh, Mr. Stanula is going to be retiring uh, effective July 1. I'm very, very happy for him. We are going to be missing them greatly. So make sure the board is aware. Um, the plan is to start the interview process probably after spring break. Um, right now we have four good candidates who have applied. We're hoping to get a few more in there. Um, I'll be reaching out to some surrounding school districts who are currently looking to hire as well and see if they have anybody they didn't hire to kind of pass uh, push in this direction as well. Um, and then my intention is to have that person starting to shadow Mr. Snoodle sometime in May. That way they can see him finish the school year, definitely get it through the first summer month. Um, and then when July 1 hits, there, they'll, they'll be on the on the ground running. So that's the plan. Okay. So as I get more information, I'll make sure to share it with you. Next, the fun one: attendance procedures. That's an excellent one. Um, so one of the things that, and again, agree or disagree, it is the state law, and I don't control the state law. Truancy is a matter of absent. It does not matter if you are excused or unexcused. The, the not great thing about that is the state has mandated that we automatically, well not automatically, but we default five days to mental health days. <coughs> Again, you're not going to hear me complain about that. Kids need days off. I get that. But then to tell me that at 12 you become true and it becomes very difficult to rationalize that. However, it's not my job to rationalize, it's my job to enforce. So, with that being said, one of the things we're going to start having to do is address just student absences in general. So starting next year, we're going to start notifying parents at five absences. Excuse or unexcused, you're going to get an email saying, hey, just want to let you know you have five absences. Again, in my world, information is not bad. Telling somebody they've missed five days of school is not bad. At seven, We'll probably have a social worker reach out to your student and or you just to make sure everything's all right. If there's, especially if it's mental health that you've had have those days off for, we want to make sure somebody checks in with you um, so that they're, you're aware. Hey, you're at seven. Seven absences is halfway to truancy. At ten well, is when you actually get your letter. The first letter that says, "Hey, just want to let you know you are now ten days absent. You are close to being truant." At 12, you are theoretically truant. At 12 is when we're actually going to do a, uh, our social worker is going to do a site visit. So our social worker will probably should go up to the home. And if you're at 12 days absence, excuse your excuse, we want to make sure that we're doing, we're doing check-ins on behalf of the school for that family. At 15 is when we actually will do any kind of truancy work with the, uh, with the county. And again, there's some, there's some leniency there. If, if, if you've used your five mental health days and we've checked in with you and you're at 15, are we calling Will County at that point in time? Probably not. But there are now specific time stamps that we're going to have moving forward. And again, I understand there's excuse and non-excuse. At the end of the day, the state does not care the rationale or the reason behind you being absent. It is a truancy. So when you look at our school report card, we are at... 88% I think is our is our non-truancy rate of chronic 19% chronic truancy. That's a big number. It's it's smaller than the state. The state's at 26, but it's a big number nonetheless. We try, there's superintendents, there's there's school board uh, uh, groups that are working with the legislation to try to clean that up. 
that that's great. That's their job. Our job is to try to make sure that the, the rules are enforced at the at our level. So what we're going to do is start putting more things in place to kind of help out those families. And so before you even snip a truancy hearing, you'll have what did I say? Five, ten, five, seven, ten, twelve. You'll have four contacts, three of them being in person, two of which are probably going to be at your home before you even get to any kind of truancy concern. I know it's not popular because, well, you give a, according to our handbook, you have one trip that you can take that's excused. 100% you do. You have five abs five absences you can call off as a parent. You 100% do. You have five mental health days. I just got the 15 days and I didn't even try that hard. Mm -hmm. But if I told you a staff member would miss 15 days, I guarantee all seven of you would look at me and go, excuse me. So if, if we want test scores to be better, I need children to be at school. And I get it. Kids are sick. Kids will get sick. You're not going to hear me argue with you. The state, the state cares about your kids, but when it comes to reporting, it is what it is. An absence is an absence is an absence. So regardless, it's um, just the same across the board. Um, it doesn't matter if it's unexcused or excused. Like for my example is, say a child is in the hospital. They're in the hospital for 10 to 15 days. Mm -hmm. yep. Are they going to start going through that process with truancy? So no. So in that in that case, we're going to work with that family. I mean, because then we've made that contact. And so um, the only way Will <laughs> County is notified of any truancy is when we report it to them. <clears throat> and so if a student is hospitalized 100%, we wouldn't. We, we would never do that to that family. But it is um, still reported to the state is 15 days. They so don't care. It's if, if you want me to answer yeah, what the state yeah, says, yeah. the state says that child's truant. Yeah. yeah. And again, we're going to disagree with that. Right. Um, sure. But so, so in special cases like that, those are that's kind of where we we've already we have those four special times. Yeah. A parent by seven or ten, we're in communication with them. If somebody checks in, hey, we understand. We're here to make sure everything's still going all right. Is there any additional um, things we can do for your kid because they were in the hospital? You know, it's not a hey, how can we get your kid to school? It's hey, how can we support your kid if they're still stuck at home or if they're injured or things like that. So, so there um, is caveats to it. Oh, 100%. 100%. So it's almost elementary school kids are getting like five to ten days easily. With influenza, strep, and all that, mm -hmm. you can hit 15. Yeah. Oh, gosh. COVID. Yeah. The way yeah. it's been this COVID. season. Yeah. How many times was I wearing a mask at a meeting? Yeah. So, again, we're not out to, this isn't a school district's out to get me. It is not, that is not the case at all. But we need to start having some kind of serious conversation because when we do take people to Will County, which Monica Schmidt has been phenomenal. She's the new truancy officer at uh, Will County. She's been to beat your four or five times now. We've never had somebody engage with us this well. Um, and, she, and she's been very blunt with us saying, I'll help you guys out, but you have to help yourselves. And so this is, Dawn's been working with her, Nicole's met with her a few times. Um, you know, this, these are the steps that she would like to see in place before we go go, to, go with there. Now, excuse versus unexcused, specific to buildings. I'll let principals kind of deal with that. I know um, at the high school senior exemption, there's an excuse versus unexcused as part of that. I believe the reward trip that Ms. Dr. Kwasney does has something to do with that. Those kind of things are still <laughs> building specific. I don't see those changing. And do those count? Like if you remember the days that you do finals and they don't have to come? No, those are considered okay. they're present. I was just trying to think yeah. when you mentioned all that, I was like, we also have those. We have these. The kids who get to go on senior ditch days. No, uh, well, that's always college that's visit. A, that's, college that's visit is, a, is, is not considered an absence. <laughs> so there's Special there's, ed no. uh, yeah. considered? Is there, are there any, for the special ed students, are they uh, in a separate class? Regarding, so regarding. Maybe if they have like a doctor's appointment, since they didn't have more doctor's off, yeah, appointments. Have, so yeah. there's no like exemption or yeah. no modifications because mm -hmm. there are kids with IOPs and 504s and we have medical, yep. whatever, yeah. um, situations. And again, I'm not telling you I agree with or yeah. disagree with what the state is saying. I'm telling you what the state is saying. Mm -hmm. and how Beecher is going to respond to what the state is saying in terms of trying to support our students and our families. That's good to know um, that there's caveats because mm -hmm. I think for that topic, mm -hmm. there's probably a lot of families that would, you know, be very disheartened or go through a lot of stress if they started getting knocks on the door. And it's but bad. if you look at it, it can only help to give that additional support and to know, like you said, it's not, you know, oh, we're yeah, trying to get you, but, right. I mean, like, and maybe it, like maybe it will help some of them, <laughs> like if they're just like, 
oh, the kid says they don't want to come to school. Right. Well, why? Yeah. What's the issue? Not, you know, we have doctor's appointment, we're sick. Yeah, everyone understands that. But hopefully this will cut out a lot of the, or, well, we want to go on our fifth vacation this year. Well, you have all summer and winter break. You know, we kind of need to learn. Okay. Um, those kind of things, hopefully that will fix. And none of the four I just mentioned do it are, well, the SRO might be the one that shows up just to do a wellness check, but it's not police involvement. It's not county involvement. It's not, not sheriff's department. It's our people. It's yeah. our social workers. It's mm -hmm. our email address. It's our, it's, it's our people reaching out to them saying, hey, we want you in school. How can we help you? Yeah. It's not police. Open up. <laughs> Where's your kid? <laughs> For the junior high and high school, are they counting periods or days? So you only do days. So half days, full days. So it's okay. Yeah. You know, because kids, we could be late every day and yep. they're getting unexcused. So that's the other thing we asked Ms. Schmidt. Um, they, okay. Again, I'm going to say it this way, that going to come out right. They don't care if you're late to second period. Mm -hmm. You don't add up minutes. They care that you're not at Either school. a half a day or a full day. Right. So, so we're going to start start communicating that throughout the, through the rest of the year, and then we're going to kind of do that big push starting next year. So some of the families who may be past that threshold, they might be getting some information saying, hey, just want to let you know next year, this mm -hmm. is some of the things you might, be, might want to be aware of. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, one more question. So I just saw about when you had said about kids with meds. If it's built into their IEPs or 504s regarding attendance, would this, does the state have any? Because it's a legal document if a student I, says, like, I have a chronic illness and it's built into the IP about attendance not I would have to reach out to Mr. Gleason and his attorneys for, for the answer. <laughs> I'm not going to. You can wait on that. That's my TV. I'm yeah, not going yeah, to venture a guess on that one. Just something if that ever comes up. Yeah, but it's also, it's one of those things that also affects our report card yes. and our rating for yes. funding and everything like yep. that. I mean, we have chronic absenteeism. You Then you Correct. have test scores. You have yeah. blah, 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 blah. And that's one thing they say, oh, well, if you look at feature, it scored this. That's one of the things that go in there. Also, yes. that five essential survey that nobody wants to fill out. That dings us, too. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that ding us that don't have to do with education yeah. of the students. And just so you know, truancy is weighted double the elementary when it comes to ratings. Oh, really? Of course it because is. Because they don't have a graduation rate that they can oh, hang out against. So, speaking of five essentials, it's online currently. Yes, <laughs> please fill it out. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know until I went I in there to look for a schedule, unfortunately. And then yeah, we're um, yeah, going to be sending something out here soon. Okay, good. I was going to say. Yeah, it's good. Okay, next is items for the April board meeting on the 8th. We have the fiscal year 24 amended budget posting. Anything else? Volleyball. You'll, you'll have the volleyball players there, yep. Yeah. Um, you'll do, just for, for record, that will be all of your uh, renewals, reckoning <coughs> tenure. Um, mm -hmm. Your administrative, well, be Mr. Meyer and Ms. Compton's administrative contracts. I guess Dr. Kwasi and Ms. Black are still under contracts, you don't have to do anything with theirs. Okay. Any other upcoming dates? No. I think my Spring wife break. Going on Spring a date break. This weekend. Spring break is coming oh, up. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. Um, all in favor to adjourn? Say aye. 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 Opposed? I need a motion. Why do I need a motion? Am I do it? Oh, okay, I need a motion to adjourn. I'll motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Sure. <laughs> 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 <laughs>